Few people in the history of the video game industry have had as much influence as this man, Gunpei Yokoi. In fact, he's arguably the most influential person in the history of gaming. Born in Kyoto in 1941, Yokoi graduated from Doshisha University with an electronics degree and in 1965 was hired by Nintendo to maintain assembly line machines that were used to manufacture Hanafuda cards. Nintendo had been making Hanafuda cards since the company's founding in 1889, initially by hand, but in the 60s it had also started to focus heavily on toy production. The following year in 1966, the current president of Nintendo, Hiroshi Yamauchi, visited the factory in which Yokoi worked. He saw an extending arm toy that Yokoi had made in his spare time while working the job and ordered its development as a product for the upcoming Christmas. The Ultra Hand was born and was a huge success, selling 1.2 million units. Yokoi was then asked to work on other toys and he came up with many more successful toys like the 10 billion barrel puzzle, Chiritori and the Ultra Machine. In 1971, Yamauchi asked Yokoi about making a clay pigeon simulator. Nintendo had already been talking with Sharp about the possibility and were testing light guns. Nintendo bought up abandoned bowling alleys and Yokoi helped design a game to go in them. Let's hear from DJ Slope of Slope's Game Room on the subject. One of the awesome things about Gunpei Yokoi is his ability to find gaps in the market. Sure, some of these gaps are there for a reason, I'm looking at you Virtual Boy, but even the bad ideas sometimes end up inspiring some pretty impressive pieces of kit. A great example of this was towards the end of the mid 70s when he worked on the laser clay shooting system, which sadly was a huge financial failure for the company, but yet again, it's what it inspired that counts. The gaming industry would be a dark place without Nintendo, and Nintendo wouldn't be Nintendo without Gunpei Yokoi. If you'd like to hear more about the laser clay shooting system, check out Slope's Wild Gunman video, a link to which is in the video description. Nintendo made toys until 1974 when their focus shifted to video games and Yokoi became one of their first two game designers. One day while travelling on a bullet train, he saw a businessman playing with an LCD calculator to pass the time. This gave him an idea for an LCD watch that doubled as a video game. The 70s had seen a commercial battle between Sharp and Casio calculators which had driven prices down and availability up for LCD displays, so an LCD game could be developed relatively inexpensively. Thus, the Game & Watch was born. The first in the Game & Watch series was Ball in 1980, and a total of 60 games were made, with the last Game & Watch release being Mario the Juggler in 1991. In 1981, Yamauchi had assigned Yokoi to supervise the development of Shigeru Miyamoto's Donkey Kong arcade game, and Yokoi advised Miyamoto on the fine points of game design. In 1982 came the multi-screen models of Game & Watch, one of which was a port of the aforementioned arcade game Donkey Kong and was my first ever gaming system as a kid. It may seem somewhat primitive to kids today to have a dedicated handheld system limited to one game, but in the 80s these were the must-have toys for us. You can instantly recognise that this design went on to influence the Game Boy Advance SP, Nintendo DS and 3DS designs, one of the many examples of Yokoi's brilliance still evident in the industry today. Another notable influence of the Donkey Kong multi-screen game and watch was that it featured a D-pad, short for directional pad. This was invented by Yokoi as a solution to the issue of movement when porting Nintendo's arcade game to the Game & Watch handheld, as they of course couldn't use a mini arcade stick, as this would be fragile and would prevent the system from closing. Prior Game & Watch designs had used directional buttons, which also weren't ideal, and so the D-pad was Yokoi's answer. The D-pad of course went on to be a key feature on Nintendo's NES controllers and Game Boy, and pretty much every home console and handheld since, right up until recent systems like the 3DS and PlayStation 4, and will no doubt be used far into the future. 
Little did I know when playing my Donkey Kong Game & Watch as a kid that I had in my hands a device that would shape the industry so much. Going back to Yokoi's involvement with the Donkey Kong arcade game, after its huge success, he worked again with Miyamoto on Mario Brothers in 1983 and had some influence over its design and it suggested the multiplayer aspect of the game. In 1984 he became head of Nintendo's first research and development team, R&D One. Under his guidance, they produced numerous popular titles for Nintendo's arcade machines, handhelds and home consoles including Kid Icarus, Metroid, Super Mario Land, Dr. Mario, Duck Hunt, Wild Gunman, and Fire Emblem. In total, Yokoi is credited in over 60 games, often as producer, but also as designer in games like Wild Gunman, Dr. Mario, and various Game & Watch games. With Duck Hunt and Wild Gunman, he designed the Famicom and NES Zapper by repurposing the tech used in his laser clay shooting system. In 1989, Yokoi and R&D1 designed the Game Boy. In a design that favoured battery life over a colour display, a decision that would actually ensure the console's success, the Game Boy was an evolution of the Game & Watch handhelds. Yokoi played some Famicom games on a black and white television, and this only cemented his confidence in his decision as it confirmed to him that colours weren't necessary to enjoy the games. He also stated that it was a hard sell for Nintendo, but he used his status within the company to sway the decision. Similar to how I reference kids today not understanding what it was like to have a dedicated handheld system, it's hard to explain how mind-blowing the release of the Game Boy was. All I could think at the time was, wow, you mean you can change the games? The increased battery life was a huge factor in the Game Boy trouncing the competition, outselling its colour screen counterparts the Sega Game Gear, Atari Lynx and NEC Turbo Express, and it outsold them by a long way. The Game Boy's fantastic library certainly helped too. After the Game Boy's release, one of the aforementioned competing handhelds was released, and a Nintendo employee came to tell Yokoi. The first question he asked was if it had a colour screen. When told it indeed did, Yokoi simply replied, then we're fine. The Game Boy was yet another great example of Yokoi's lateral thinking with withered technology ethos. As with any innovator, Yokoi did have his share of failures. Rob the robot for the NES being one. And in 1995 came another console he designed, the Virtual Boy. A great idea that was sadly sullied by reports of users getting headaches, the Virtual Boy was perhaps too ahead of its time and was a commercial disaster for Nintendo. Yokoi left Nintendo in 1996 after assisting with the release of the Game Boy Pocket. Rumours spread that this was due to the Virtual Boy's failure, but have since been discredited. Nintendo's press release at the time stated, It is reality that Mr Yokoi has indeed left, but it has absolutely nothing to do with the failure of the Virtual Boy. There's no doubt that the Virtual Boy was a failure, but the head of the company himself has said that the blame for that rests on the decision to sell it to begin with. The D-pad and Game Boy that Mr. Yokoi developed are incredible. Such a man taking the blame for the 32-bit device and leaving the company is completely made up. He left to form the company Kota Laboratory, where he led Bandai's Wonderswan development. Sadly, he never saw its release. On October the 4th, 1997, Gunpei Yokoi was involved in a fatal car accident, dying very young at only 56. A tragic loss for the industry, losing the man that brought us the D-pad, which has influenced almost every controller ever since, the Game & Watch that led to the Nintendo DS, numerous iconic games, and the Nintendo Game Boy. We're still seeing his influence today, most recently with the design of the 3DS and the PS4 controller, and that will no doubt continue indefinitely. Koto Laboratory named their 1999 title for the Wonderswan Gunpei after him. The series has since come to several platforms including PlayStation, DS and PSP. In 2003 he was posthumously awarded a Lifetime Achievement Award from the International Game Developers Association. On his gravestone are marked his most iconic creations, 1968 Ultra Machine, 
1973 Laser Clay, 1980 10 Billion, 1980 Game and Watch, 1989 Game Boy. That was a brief history of the life and influence of Gunpei Yokoi, gone but certainly not forgotten. <laughs>